For in this addition to Genshin Impact has spurred a massive change in the meta given the incredible value and options made available thanks to Ramusa. Like I explained in a day one why everyone plays Sidio, there literally has not been a character with this much stuff and more importantly this specific kind of stuff that she can offer. Not only in regards to the sheer power she brings to the table, but the combination of her elements, the way she supports her team, and the accessibility of it is a tremendous quality of life improvement for so many characters and so many teams. Hydro is already the most influential element in the game which means Marina has the potential to affect so many different teams and their lineups. What's interesting about her though is that she doesn't just affect teams, Farina might be the first character in Genshin who indirectly buffs other units. We've had systems changes that buff units like how Dendro made Kuching, Yai, Niko, and Shinobu really good, and there were characters that improved overall teams like how Yelan introduced us to Double Hydro, or how Nahida unlocked the full strength of Dendro teams, but to my knowledge, there hasn't yet been a character who directly makes specific units more valuable through intrinsic synergy. So for today's video, I wanted to list 5 characters that received a significant boost in value from the Hydro Archon. Technically, an overwhelming majority of characters and teams have been made stronger, but Farina has given these 5 units entirely new opportunities. Coming in at number 5, we have Yelan. From her inclusion almost 2 years ago, Yelan has cemented herself as one of Genshin's best off-field DPS characters thanks to her depth clearing dice dishing out extraordinary follow-up damage while simultaneously amplifying the active party member's total damage in the process. She was the first unit, to my knowledge, to grant unconditional total damage bonus in the default kit. Most other forms of damage boosts were either elemental damage like Kasaha, elemental mastery like Sucrose, attack power like Bennett, or increases to specific areas, normal attacks, charge attacks, skills, bursts, etc. Whereas Yelan's passive talent was damage amplification for all kinds and forms of damage, reactions notwithstanding of course. The only issue is that due to the nature of her ultimate, Depth Clearing Dice's power is connected to her, meaning unlike persistent effects such as Kasaha, Ganyu, or Shangling's burst, Yelan's burst is unable to snapshot, and since she's more or less never the active character, her follow up damage can't be increased via existing supports. Not that she needs their help, like I said her damage by itself is extraordinary as is, but it's a shame that it can't be improved through external means, that is, until now. Farina's Elemental Burst is the first of its kind to provide supplementary damage to all party members, not just the active character, allowing for said burst to directly enhance Death Clearing Dice's power. This makes Yelan easily the best pair with Farina. The activation of Hydro Resonance grants a measurable increase in damage to both of them by way of their HP scaling. Meanwhile, Yelan and Farina afford a sum total of up to 125% bonus damage, or 174% of Farina's Constellation 3 to the active character, which in and of itself is absurd to even imagine. Then, Farina's buff also increases Yelan's power as well, causing the latter's burst damage to climb even higher. It also helps that they both share a relatively similar uptime too. Moreover, Yelan's elemental skill can serve as a quick and easy way to charge energy for Farina, who may struggle to power up her ultimate otherwise. The reason I emphasize Yelan's burst over Sinchos, who behaves the same way, is mostly as a result of Death Clearing Dice far exceeding Rain Cutter's damage. This was initially counterbalanced by Yelan struggling to apply enough Hydro on her own, necessitating her to be paired with Shinto, but Farina can now take Shinto's spot as supplementary Hydro application but with astronomically more damage. Moving on, taking the 4th place spot is Sanganomiya Kokomi. Seems like the universe has a penchant for finding even more ways to make this unit better and better. Though Farina's best support pair is without attack Yelan, the next 4 units benefit from her in an entirely different way, that is to say they receive entirely new playstyles and niches. In Kokomi's case, believe it or not, the best way to use her now is not as a support but as the main damage dealer. It's been over 2 years since her release back in version 2.1, and for most if not the entire time, Kokomi was mostly known and used for her supportive and regenerative faculty. On occasion, you might activate her elemental burst and throw a few auto attacks here and there, but teams featuring her typically made use of her persistent application via her jellyfish. With her almost complete inability to critically strike, it was kind of hard to use her as a main damage dealer compared to just about anyone else. But with Arena now in play, the Mono Hydro team is now a legitimate, if not borderline top tier team. We now have 3 sub DPS Hydro units, Shinto, Yelan, and Farina. The 3 of them alone can probably contribute more damage than even 4 man teams. All we need now is a healer, preferably a healer who can deal damage as a main user. Kokomi just so happens to be the girl for the job. Yes, Kokomi is now a damage dealer. While her elemental burst is active, Kokomi's attacks regenerate the health of her entire party to counteract Farina's elemental skill draining your party. On top of that, her jellyfish can heal in large bursts, allowing you to accumulate fanfare stacks at a very fast pace in tandem with Kokomi's on-hit regen. And if that weren't enough, it's important to remember that Farina's burst provides increased incoming healing too, which helps if you're using the Ocean Heat Clam set. Kokomi is one of if not the only character in Genshin whose damage can be strengthened by incoming healing, giving her even more damage. Because of her natural durability as an HP scaler, Kokomi Mono Hydro is arguably the second most indestructible team in the game, and with a team of all Hydro characters, none of them need energy recharge, making it one of the easiest teams to build. I can't even begin to fathom a situation where you're taking more damage than Kokomi can regenerate even in spite of Farina's health drain. 
She can already have upwards of 60% healing bonus on her own, add in the 30-50% to supply by Farina, and you basically never die with this team. It took 2 years, but Kokome can now finally serve as not only a veritable, but extremely powerful on-field damage dealer. I mean, if we're splitting hairs, Kokome isn't actually a hyper carry. All 4 party members will be contributing damage, it's just that she allows the trio to function at full capacity with their healing. The only downside of course is that you have no access to reactions, unless the enemies you're fighting apply elements to themselves. But I mean, come on, we've seen to Yelan and Farina, elemental reactions can go to hell. You'll just kill everything through sheer hydro power, crit strikes be damned, Farina is crit strikes. But what if I still want to have elemental reactions, you ask? Fear not, for thanks to how ridiculous Farina's moveset is, she theoretically makes any healer with even the slightest modicum of damage potential 10 times more valuable, and Baishu is another such beneficiary. Baishu has always been a very interesting character, not bad by any means. Some would say his value rivals out of Kokomi in regards to healing and support, with the only really thing holding him back being his status as a Dendro character. His banner wasn't too successful in light of coming in after Nahida and I'll hate them who more than met anyone's Dendro needs, as well as Yao Yao having been released a couple versions prior who served as a Dendro healer. So the only people who really cared for Baiju were those who have been saving for him since the very start of the game. That's not to say Baiju is a bad character, it's mostly that there wasn't an explicit need for players to go out of their way to get him. All things demanded by Dendro have long been taken care of. The advent of Farina changes that, making Baiju occupy almost as much if not just as much market share as the Dendro Archon herself. Universal Diagnosis recovers the health of all party members based on its max HP when the spy returns back to him, and it's a prominent amount at that. With Constellation 1, you can also throw 2 at a time for pretty much an instant full party heal. Should that somehow be inefficient, his elemental burst equips the active character with the shield that regenerates every 2.5 seconds, during which, every time you get a new shield or an existing one breaks, the active character heals for a large amount of health, enabling you to fully max out fanfare stacks relatively quickly. The obvious advantage Baiju has over Kokomi is that he can facilitate dendro reactions without any compromise in efficiency. On top of that, because he gives both heals and shields, the accompanying super armor can protect you more consistently than Kokomi can, who only affords healing. Though Nahida's dendro facilitation still outranks Baishu from an individual standpoint, Farina can make up for that via her total party damage bonus. Or in other words, Baishu plus Farina will more likely than not beat out any other dendro pair. Also, it's not that he doesn't have enough dendro application, it's more that Nahida has too much dendro application. So the argument of having less applications and mood points since Baishu is just as capable of driving dendro on his own. And before you say, but what about Nahida and Farina? It bears repeating that Farina needs a healer to make the most out of her kit. If you go Nahida and Farina, which you certainly can, you'll need a third party slot to heal with anyway. So the idea is to find units who can offer healing alongside other things, bringing us to the second most improved character. Once a unit who is my version of Chi Chi, Jean has risen from a relatively middling character to one of the most essential support healers in the entire game. Those of you who remember back when I used to upload poll videos, for some inexplicable reason, I kept losing my 50-50s to Jean. I think I pulled like 9 copies of her. Jean has struggled to maintain any semblance of market share in the animal department due to her not really having the most intuitive or practical kit, especially in regards to what animal units are trying to pull off. And though she does have a unique aspect to her in the form of being an animal healer, she didn't provide adequate supplementary benefits to warrant being used over other healers like the aforementioned Kokomi and Baiju. But there is one thing she has that no other healer does, instant party-wide healing. On activation of Dandelion Breeze, Jean immediately restores her entire party's health, likely enough to fully cap out Farina's fanfare stacks at the press of a button. If we measure based on how fast the unique can cap fanfare stacks, Jean is without question the fastest. And even if there are a few more stacks to go, the persistent regeneration area can easily top you off for the duration. If that wasn't enough, Jean's normal attacks have a chance to recover health as well should you ever need it. In addition, she has two other aspects to her that can be appealing for teams. First being C2, which gives you bonus movement and attack speed with almost permanent uptime, since the only condition to activate it is to pick up an elemental orb or a particle, something you do just by playing the game. With Farina, ushering in a resurgence of hypercare units, anyone who makes use of normal attacks like I'll hate them, Hu Tao, and so on can make use of the extra attack speed. The real incentive though is that Jean plus Farina enables any team to have access to VV Shred, which was a lot harder to tap into back then. Let's take Kutal's original double hydro team as an example. It was kind of difficult to add Katsuha to this team because Zhongli had to be there to ensure the team didn't explode. At the same time, you also needed Shinto and Yelan to make the team work. With Farina giving such spectacular damage buffs on her own though, the new double hydro team is now Kutal, Farina, Yelan, and Jin. The damage amp from Farina exceeds that of Zhongli's elemental shred from Jade Shield and Hu Tao's pyro damage boost from being low health combined, letting you flex the force slot at no loss of DPS. Jean just so happens to be the best at priming fanfare stacks, and now that you have an animal character, you have access to VV Shred, giving Double Hydro even more power. Granted, achieving Swirl on Jean can be a significantly more cumbersome task than Sucrose or Kasaha, but the point is, she can do it. 
Verena's inclusion has turned Jean from a passing grade healing support to potentially one of the best healers in the game, as she's the only unit at present capable of instantly maxing Verena's fanfare stacks to get the full benefits of her elemental burst right from the start. Of course, once we get another instant party healer, Jean's probably going to be relegated back to her original position, but for the time being, everyone better dust off their Jean and put it to work because the Knights of Favonius are back. And speaking of the Knights of Favonius, Noel means rejoice, for I come bearing news, your prayers, your patience, your excessive, probably medically life-threatening amounts of copium has finally paid off. Coming in at number 1, the single most buffed unit from the inclusion of Rina is by leaps and bounds, Noel. Disclaimer, not the most powerful, let's not get ahead of ourselves, only the most buffed. Never thought I'd see the day. The amount of copium Noel means are on rival side of even Eula means, and I can't believe that it actually freaking worked. Noel was made for Farina. Noel's prevailing issue is that the damage output of her teams was nowhere near good enough to compete with other DPS units. Yes, I'm fully aware that with enough defense you can achieve monstrous amounts of attack, but looking at it objectively, dozens of other characters were just flat out better than her, especially as time went on. Now, though Farina's DPS boost effectively applies to the entire cast, Noelle benefits from it the most because of the way her kit functions. She's always been known as a one-woman army. Her skill creates a shield based off her defense that, while it holds, grants her a percent chance to regenerate her entire party's health just like Kokomi and Jean can, and with said healing being based on a portion of her defense, it's fairly substantial, letting her easily stack up fanfare in record time. Moreover, if you have Constellation 1, that regeneration effect is guaranteed while her burst is active. Speaking of her burst at Constellation 6, for every enemy Noel takes down, she can prolong the duration of sweeping time by up to 10 seconds, giving her overflow of time, which is one advantage she has compared to the vast majority of on-field hyper carries. Noel can last forever. It's just that her damage was so poor that it didn't really matter how long she lasted. Another pain point for Noel is that most of the powerful supports in the game are incompatible with her to some extent. Kasuha is all but useless on account of his elemental damage boost only pertaining to the swirlable elements, Pyro, Cryo, Hydro, and Electro, so he can't boost Geo damage, which, by the way, I feel the need to apologize for having made that mistake in past videos. By extension, Elemental Mastery doesn't help Noel whatsoever either, disqualifying her from taking advantage of the likes of Sucrose and Nahida. Furthermore, though Noel ultimately makes use of the attack stat, Bennett's attack boost doesn't help her out nearly as much as other units given that she already has so much attack to begin with as a result of her defense conversion, and Fantastic Voyage's comparatively shorter duration can lead to inconsistency problems for her. The only real non geo support that circumvented all of this before was Yelan, who would rather be used to assist literally anyone else. However, with Farina added to the equation, you actually have a veritable incentive to use Noelle as your main damage dealer, as she's pretty much a Geo Kokomi if not better. Noelle plus one of the Geo character plus Yelan and Farina is a remarkably powerful combination that offers just enough raw strength to allow the Favonius Knight in training to brute force her way through basically everything. Mind you, she's still not the best choice, but considering she went from, bluntly speaking, bottom tier to like top 10 best on-field carries has to be the biggest improvement we've seen out of a single character to date. Noelle's kit is perfect for Farina. And even if her ceiling still falls short of some other characters, one thing she has that they don't is invincibility. Noelle carry might very well be the most indestructible team in the game right now, especially if you decide to run Zhongli as your second Geo unit. I would like to see anyone try to intentionally die with that much healing and shielding going on. I honestly can't believe the copium worked. I thought Kutsing means were on some of that good shit before Denjo came out. Compared to Noel, they were sober as a judge. This serves as a testament to how game-changing Farina is. She made a bottom tier unit one of the best on-field drivers in the game. It's incredible to think that Farina's playstyle has enabled so many characters, both weak and strong, to have entirely new functions and purposes just by her very existence. While some may interpret this as power creep, I find this to be a surprising breath of fresh air. There are countless units in Genshin who have the potential to be exceptional assets to your roster, but are just missing one thing or have that one issue that holds them back. I know most of it boils down to units with healing that finally have access to damage, but I mean hey, now there's a legitimate reason to use a healing character over a shielding one. They become 10 times more valuable when paired with Farina. So TLDR, Noel mains can finally stop shooting themselves up with Copium three long years later, and she finally has a prominent position in the meta. Enjoy yourselves, everyone. That wraps up today's video though, the 5 characters that got buffed the most by Farina. Let me know in the comments down below whether you agree or disagree with my choices, but for now, if you enjoyed the video, I encourage you to leave a like and subscribe. Consider following me on Twitter at VarsFam, joining my Discord server, and checking out my Why Everyone Plays Farina video if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.